I got a Soviet drum machine coming in the mail, and it only takes drum trigger inputs. No MIDI or anything, and I do want to sequence it. Uh, and the plan is um, MIDI in, uh, MIDI through, and then these will be the trigger outputs, uh, which will all be triggered by different notes of MIDI. And then I'll have the seven segment LED, which I'll tell you what channel it's listening on, which will be selectable. When you press this, it'll swap MIDI channels. All right, so a little progress. This is my uh, YM2420 synth, and I have a MIDI out coming out of my synthesizer. Going into a MIDI connection here. That's on MIDI channel one, and there's the LED. A little more progress. Now I can hit certain notes and nothing will show up. But if I hit the right note, it turns on. So now I have individual triggers per note. And this is configured using an array right here. And got an LED to link to FL Studios. I now have support for a 7 segment LED. The menu is going to be driven by two uh, tack switches. I decided it would be a good idea to have um, not only channel control, but the ability to control where the drums start. Uh, reason being is if two of these were to be used, then you could have two of these on the same channel triggering drums independently, just depending on where you put your notes. And you need to be able to change both the MIDI channel and the start notes. So if I press this button, which will go into MIDI channel edit mode, and then you can press these buttons to change your MIDI channel. Okay, a little more progress. I added that strobe effect. And you can see that. Got the LED. Okay, so progress here. I got the first key thing working. If you press the second button, then you go into an editor to change the first key. And just like the menu, what you would do is wait for that to time out. It's five seconds, and then it goes back to the MIDI channel. Press that, you can go there and change your note. Yeah. Hey, okay, more progress. I got the EEPROM stuff working. If I change the MIDI channel, say I set this to channel 10, once the light stops blinking, it does an EEPROM right. So now, if I unplug and plug back in, it's back to channel 10. And this also works for the key. If I change this from 3C to 3A, We'll save after the timeout, unplug, plug back in. Uh, this displays the channel by default unless you change it. And here it is here, 3A. Uh, since there is 127 different starting notes you can choose from, I thought it would be a good idea to add a key repeat. I have implemented a, I suppose you could say analog MIDI through, per se. It's uh, done through electrical connections and not through software, so there's no latency. You can kind of hear my Juno. So I figured while waiting for my drum machine to come and actually test this thing, I'd start building the box. So what I thought I would do is have the two MIDI uh, connections here, have the left and right connections here, and then there will be 10 triggers going five on top, five on the bottom. I can use one of these guys that will connect directly into the Arduino, and I'll just chop this end off. That'll give me the ability to flash this thing without taking it out of the box and power it over what would just be like a phone charger. Yeah. Okay, well, I got the panel cut. 7 segment LED is going to hide up here behind the case. It'll just shine through the red. 
Look at those MIDI parts. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? Fits super, super well. Okay, I have sufficiently made a mess out of my downstairs, and I have no drum machine to test this on, so uh, that concludes the end of part one. When uh, I get my drum machine in, I'm going to try triggering it with uh, random low voltages and see what's reliable. Then finally put a board together and start making this thing real. Alright, well thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.